الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue reading in the ترجمة of Al Fudail ibn Iyal رحمه الله تعالى and his biography uh, is a bit long and this is because of what the author mentioned from his beneficial statements beginning this affair with what has proceeded from the statement of Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala mentioning about mentioning about fadail annahu sadaqallah fa ajra Allah al-hikmata ala lisanihi that he was truthful with Allah and fadail ibn iyal rahimahullah ta'ala he was truthful with Allah so therefore Allah he caused wisdom to flow from his tongue any wisdom and benefit and a good understanding of this life and the hereafter. And he was from those whom his knowledge benefited him. So we continue reading from that which Dhahabi he mentioned and collected from the beneficial statements of Al Fulail ibn Iyal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. From that he mentioned, La Yaslamu Laka Kalbuka. حتى لا تباري من أكل الدنيا حتى لا تباري من أكل الدنيا and he from his wisdom رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned that your heart will never be sound for you and he upright and correct until you do not have any concern about who eats from this worldly life and he from who has any possession and property and prosperity in this life meaning that a person his heart will not look at others and be jealous of them because of the dunya that they have and this will not affect him, and it will not bother him to see others having good from the blessings and bounties of Allah. As for the one who has envy, he has envy and hatred and animosity in his heart, and he sees blessings and bounties upon others, and he dislikes that, then this is from the worst of traits. And this person is known as Al-Hasud. Al-Hasud, and he's the one who is uh, jealous, and he has envy in his heart. And this is from the worst and the foul of all traits. So he's saying that your heart will never be safe and sound. It will never be good for you until you have no concern and you do not care who eats from the worldly life. And who has money and who, who has wealth and who has property and who has rank. A believer, he doesn't look to that. And he doesn't uh, busy himself with, with the affairs of the people. And uh, having enmity and animosity and having envy and jealousy in the heart is from the affairs that will destroy the heart. And a person who has jealousy for someone else, he cannot stop thinking of him. And he will think of him and think of him until it will burn his heart. Until it will burn his heart. And every time the man is mentioned, yani he will have something to say and something to think about and something to, to mention and the likes like this. And this is yani what he's mentioning here. لا يسلم لك قلبك حتى لا تباري من أكل الدنيا That your heart will never be sound for you and good until you have no concern or care for the people uh, of this life and what they have from the worldly affairs. And yeah, believer, he loves to see good for his brothers just as he loves to see good for himself. And the one who is jealous and the one who is hasid, then uh, the people of knowledge, they mention about him, huwa adu wa ni'mah. Huwa adu and ni'mah. He is the enemy of bounties and blessings. He is the enemy of bounties and blessings. And uh, to see good along with others and to dislike that, even if a person he did not wish for it to come to him or to leave that individual, just to dislike others having good from the worldly affair or from the affairs of their religion, this is considered hasid. And this is a foul trait. And we have been commanded to seek refuge with Allah from the, the hasid of those who envy, from the jealousy of those who envy. And he, so this is uh, something that he's referring to. So believer, he looks into himself. After this, he says, وَقِيلَ لَهُ And it was said to him, مَا الزُّهُد مَا الزُّهُد قَالَ الْقُنُوعَ قِيلَ وَمَنْ وَرَعَ قَالَ اجْتِنَابُ الْمَحَارِمْ قِيلَ مَا الْعِبَادَ قَالَ أَدَاءُ الْفَرَائِضِ قيل ما ما تواضع قال أن تخضع للحق وقال أشد الورع في اللسان أشد الورع في اللسان it's mentioned to him رحمه الله تعالى what is الزهد 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 means abstinence and in English it means the abstinence and to abstain from something it means abstinence and to abstain from something and and what is intended here is to leave off uh, the worldly life. I need to leave off that and to prepare oneself for, for the hereafter and to busy oneself with the hereafter. Some of the, the Sufis, they have misunderstood this word and they have used uh, the likes uh, of these statements to uh, wear 
clothing that is dirty or old or rough and the lights like this. And this was not understood from the Salaf. Rather, he's saying now, clarifying the meaning of a zuhd with the, the Salaf, he says al qunur al qunur that a person, he'll be satisfied with what Allah has given him, that he will have contentment and satisfaction for that which was decreed for him, for that which was decreed for him. It has come in uh, Jami' al-Alum wal hikam by Ibn Rajab, and he's mentioning uh, the uh, inclusive definition of a zuhd. And uh, it's mentioned that Zuhd fi dunya tarku al insan kulla ma yashkaruhu an illah. And Shaykhuna Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that this is the best, the best of the definitions and the words that have been mentioned or, or interpretations that, that have been mentioned about this word. Az Zuhd tarku al insan kulla ma yashkaruhu an illah. The reality of Zuhd and uh, piety and righteousness and abstinence from this worldly affair is to leave off everything that would preoccupy someone from Allah. To leave off everything that would preoccupy someone from Allah. That and this is the case. But it's known that the people of knowledge from the Salaf al-Salih, that many of them, they would have clothing that is nice. Uh, and they would have uh, from the worldly affairs that which is good. But it would not be in their hearts. It would be in their hands. It would not be in their hearts. It would be in their hands. So they would have the wealth that they have been provided and the blessings that they have from the worldly affair and they would use that for the hereafter. So that would not preoccupy them from Allah. Rather, they would use that to draw closer to Allah. And this is the calamity that we have. The opposite of that is whenever a person, he has the love of this world in his heart and the love of wealth and prosperity in his heart, even if he doesn't have it in his hand, it will preoccupy him from Allah and it will destroy him and ruin him. It will destroy him and, and ruin him. So therefore, a believer, his goal and his, his aim is to reach the pleasure of Allah. And this is to be, to, be, to be content with the decree of Allah. Just as he mentions here, مَزْزُهُدْ قَالَ الْقُنُورَ to, to, uh, to have zuhd and to abstain from the worldly affair, this means that a person, he will be satisfied with what Allah has given him and that he will not be preoccupied with this worldly life and leaving off his main goal and, and, and preparing for the meeting of his Lord. Rather, this life, he will use that. He will use that in what he has from provision and what he has from strength and wealth and what he has from well-being in mind and in his body to reach his goal and his aim. And that is to reach the paradise and the jannah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, it was said to him, مَا الْوَرَعَ مَا الْوَرَعَ الْوَرَعَ it means, it means piety. It means piety. But many times al warah is used to refer, to refer to leaving off that which is impermissible and staying away from that which is doubtful. And it's a high level of taqwa and piety. It's a high level uh, of taqwa and piety. So this is what he, did, he, he, he answers, Rahimahullah. He said, اجتناب المحارم. اجتناب المحارم. To stay away. To stay away from that which is impermissible. So if one wants to be pious and righteous, he should stay away from that which is impermissible. And uh, with regards to the performance of the obligations, for example, the pillars of Islam, all of the Muslims, they participate in that. All of the Muslims, they pray the five daily prayers. And all of the Muslims, they fast in Ramadan. But not all of them are able to leave off that which is impermissible. But not all of them are able to leave off that which is impermissible. So the people of Nala, as they mentioned, this is a high level. Yani to perform the obligations, no doubt. And also from the greatest of obligations is to leave off that which is impermissible. To leave off the haram and to stay away from that. To leave off the haram and to stay away from that. Until a person, he could reach a level, he will leave off even many of the affairs that are permissible for him out of fear that it will draw him out of fear that it would draw him to that which is impermissible. And this is, uh, in reality, al <coughs> wara and, and piety. Shaykh Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked about the difference between al wara and al zuhd The difference between al wara and uh, al zuhd He said, rahimahullah, al wara tarku ma yadurru fil akhira. Tarku ma yadurru fil akhira. al wara and the true piety and fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is to leave off everything that will harm a person in his hereafter. Everything that will harm him in his hereafter. Anything from speech, and from statement, and from deed. Anything from the affairs of the dunya, and wealth, and the likes, that would harm a person if he partakes in that, in the hereafter, to leave, to, to leave that. To leave that out of fear of Allah, this is called al-wara. This is called al-wara. But he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, and al-zuhd, al-zuhd is a level higher than that. Al-zuhd is a level higher than that. وَتَرْكُ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُ فِي الْأَخِرَةِ to leave off, 
to leave off that which does not benefit in the hereafter. To leave off that which does not benefit in the hereafter. So the one who leaves off that which uh, will harm his hereafter, this one is called wariyah. He's called wariyah, and he's described with wara, and he has piety and righteousness. But maybe he'll be busy with some of the worldly affairs, and he will fulfill his desires and that which is permissible. And he's not gaining any nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever. So although he will stay away from that which harms himself, he will not dedicate himself entirely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as for the, the next level, which is higher than that, which is a zuhud, the one who's considered zahid, the one who's considered zahid, then he is the one who leaves off that which is not beneficial in the hereafter. And he meaning as Ibn Rajab, he mentioned, to leave off everything that will preoccupy a person from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person, he sees that his family is causing him to forget Allah, then he will check himself. If he sees that his wealth will cause him to forget Allah, then he will check himself. Rather, a person who is pious and righteous and who has been given success, he is one who will serve his family for the sake of Allah. And he'll provide for his family for the sake of Allah. And he will please and smile with his family and laugh with them for the sake of Allah. So every action that he does is drawing him nearer to Allah. So he will turn the daily affairs into actions of worship with a beautiful intention. يُسَيِّرُ الْعَادَاتِ ibadat bin niya sariha. He will turn the, the everyday actions and the normal affairs that are mubahat, and feeding his family and taking care of his family and, and making the, 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 the children happy and laugh and the likes like this and educating them and, te and teaching them and clothing, uh, clothing them, all of the affairs that he does, he will remember Allah with regards to that and he will do it for the sake of Allah. And likewise, whenever he sleeps, he will not go to sleep heedless. Rather, he will remember Allah. So therefore, everything that he does is for the sake of Allah. He's sleeping, and he's sleeping upon the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. For example, he will make wudu before he goes to sleep. And he will lay on his right side and make the adhkar, remembering Allah Azza and his bounties and blessings that have come, and the adhkar that have come from the Messenger wasallam. And he will sleep with the intention to, to wake up for the Fajr prayer. Or even better than that, with the intention to wake up for the night prayer. Or he will pray the night prayer before he goes to bed if he thinks he's not going to wake up. And like Wise, he will sleep with the intention of gaining strength so he can continue to fulfill his obligations and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore even his sleep, it becomes a means of blessing for him and a means of drawing near to Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise, whenever he puts on his clothes, he will not put on his clothes heedlessly whenever he wakes up. Rather, he will cover his private parts because it's an obligation. Because it's an obligation. The, it's not allowed for a person to walk around with his privates uncovered. Rather, he will cover them, but he would do that for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will remember Allah whenever he puts on his clothes. And there are afkar that if a believer he learns with regards to this, it would aid him to remember Allah in this affair. So he will clothe, him, he will clothe himself and he will go about his day and with the remembrance of Allah. And he will make his actions seeking the pleasure and the, and the reward from Allah. So therefore, this one, he is truly zahid and he has turned this life and all of it uh, into a blessing for him. So this is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to remember Allah azza wa jal at all times. He used to remember Allah azza wa jal at all times. So the one who learns about these affairs, the affairs of al and the affairs of zuhud, this is from the greatest means to draw near to Allah. From the greatest means to rectify oneself and to wake up and to realize that uh, we are created and we have a creator and uh, he has angels that are writing and we're returning to him and he's going to ask us subhanahu wa ta'ala about our actions and how we used his blessings tabaraka wa ta'ala and if we were good in that and honest and, tr and trustworthy with regards to those blessings and bounties and the bounty of our islam then we will have good with our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala but if we misused those bounties and blessings and we betrayed the trust, then a believer is faced with the anger of his Lord. So Azud, he says, al kunur yani satisfaction with the decree of Allah and that which Allah has written for him from all affairs. And likewise, al wara is to stay away from that which is impermissible, to stay away from the haram. And ibadah, he says, what is ibadah? What is ibadah? What is worship? He said, the reality of worship, if you want to know what worship is, ada'ul fara'id, to perform the obligatory affairs. And this takes precedence. And this is great fiqh and understanding in the deen. And many people, they will perform and have concern for worship and the likes like this. And they will give great concern for the non-obligatory action and they will neglect 
the obligatory affair. And they will neglect the obligatory affair. And if a person, he did not strive against the soul, shaitan will come to him in this manner and even help him to have kushur in uh, the non-obligatory salat in order to preoccupy him and to cause him to be heedless and negligent in the obligatory salat. And uh, the obligatory action, it takes precedence and it's more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he mentioned in the hadith al-Qudsi, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيِّ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ فَتَرَتُهُ عَلَيْهِ So this is the case. Ibn Hajar, he mentioned, رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَنْ شَغَلَهُ الْفَرْضُ عَنَ النَّفْلِ فَهُوَ مَعْذُورُ that whoever is preoccupied with an obligation and was not able to perform that which is not obligatory, he's excused. وَمَنْ شَغَلَهُ النَّفْلُ عَنِ الْفَرْضِ فَهُوَ فَهُوَ مَغْرُورُ فَهُوَ مَغْرُورُ And whoever is preoccupied with the non-obligatory action of worship and left off the obligatory action or was negligent in that, then he has been deceived. Then he has been deceived. So the reality of al is to fulfill the obligations is to fulfill the obligations. From the greatest obligations of ibadah is seeking knowledge, is seeking knowledge. To seek the knowledge, to know what is obligatory, and to know the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His prohibitions in order to perform them upon, upon insight and upon clarity. So from the greatest of the worship that is obligatory, seeking knowledge of the obligations. Seeking knowledge of the obligations upon a person in one day and one night. In one day and in one night. He said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, it's mentioned to him, وَمَا تَوَاضُعَ And what does uh, humbleness mean? Any humility and being humble, not being arrogant or boastful. He said, in تَخْضَعَ الحق, And that you surrender and submit to the truth. That you submit and you surrender to the truth, meaning wherever it came from. If somebody, he brought the truth, one, he will surrender to that. If someone, he brought the evidence from the Quran and from the Sunnah with a clear uh, understanding that uh, it indicates the issue, then he will surrender to that. Whether the big one brought it or the small one. Whether the big one brought it or the small one. Any the elder or the youth. Or whatever the case it is or however it came to him. And like this, the people of hadith, they used to say, لا يكون الرجل من أهل الحديث حتى يأخذ عمن هو دونه وعمن هو فوقه وعمن هو مثله That a person, he will not truly be from a student of a hadith, he will not truly be a student of knowledge until he takes knowledge from those who are above him and those who are below him and from those who are on the same level and peers to him, and peers to him. So a person who is seeking the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's seeking knowledge, he will take the truth wherever it comes from and he will submit to that and surrender to that. And تَخْضَعَ للحق. And تَخْضَعَ للحق. This is tawadu'a. It has come likewise, يعني, it has come in, a, in a Sahih a Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَن تَوَضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ That whoever humbles himself before Allah, and before the commandments of Allah, and before the deen of Allah, and submits himself, submits himself, surrenders himself to Allah, he's humble, and he before Allah, by performing that which is obligatory in his right, subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Allah will raise his rank. Allah, he will raise his rank. After this, he mentioned an amazing affair. قَالَ وَقَالَ أَشَدُّ الْوَرَعِ فِي اللِّسَانِ أَشَدُّ الْوَرَعِ فِي اللِّسَانِ And the most severe, I mean, the most difficult type of piety and being cautious and leaving off that which is impermissible is that which is related to the tongue. Is that which is, is related to the tongue. And so this is a, an amazing affair. And the issue that, that he, he's aware of, that a person, he could... Yani fast all day long. Uh, he could fast all day long and then he'll break his fast uh, on that which is impermissible and, ha and haram. He'll be fasting all day long, but he's backbiting the people at the same time or he'll stand in the night prayer and then, he, and, he, and then he'll wake up in the daytime and he'll cheat the people and the likes like this and he'll lie to them and he'll deceive them and he'll trick them with the gift of gab and so on and so forth. And he's so a person uh, controlling his tongue, this is something that shows true piety and true righteousness, that he's able to control, to control his own tongue. And the tongue, it only dishes out that which, that which is in the heart. The tongue, it only dishes out that which is, that which is in the heart. And that habi, he has some co commentary here. He says, Kultu yeah, this is, this is true. He said, He said, you might find a man 
who is pious and righteous with regards to his food, and he cautious where his food comes from, and cautious where his clothing comes from, and his dealings and the likes like this, but whenever he speaks, and he, he, he's tried in this manner. Whenever he speaks, he's tried in this manner. Either he will have to pursue, and he being honest and truthful in his speech and not be able to do that, and or or else he will uh, either he will pursue the, he will pursue the truth and not be able to fulfill that or even if he is able to be honest and truthful then even at this time he will beautify his speech in order for the people to praise him he will order in order for the people to praise him so this is any the clarification of what that means ashad al wara fi lisan that uh, the most severest type of piety is in the tongue. Because even a person, maybe he'll be honest, but then in the, with, that, he, he, with that, he wants praise from the people. With that, he wants praise uh, from the people. So this is you know, something that a believer, he will examine. And uh, the salaf, they used to say, من عدى كلامه من عمله من جملة عمله قل كلامه The one who considers his, his, his speech from the general actions that will be weighed against him or for him on the day of resurrection he will speak he will speak less and he will speak less uh, after this uh Adhabi, he mentions that uh, one of the salaf they heard al fudail saying he said if i had a supplication that i knew would be answered if I had a supplication that I knew would be answered, I would make it for the leader. I would make it for the ruler, for the Muslim ruler. He said, because the rectification of the Muslim ruler is the rectification of the lands and of the slaves. Of the lands and of the slaves. This is an indication uh, uh, of his love, his love uh, of goodness for the Muslims. And he, how, many could, how many could do that? If it was mentioned to one of us right now that you have a supplication, that you have a supplication, whatever you desire and you ask for, that Allah he will grant it to you. What, what would one, his mind go to? Yeah, his mind go to? Yeah, many, many, many things from the worldly affair and from the hereafter. Some of them are beautiful and good and permissible and halal. Alhamdulillah, and there's no blame in that. But he, he's thinking about, he's thinking about the betterment and the benefit of the Muslims. He's thinking about the benefit of the ummah. And this is an indication of a big heart. This is indication of a big heart and sincerity and truthfulness that he wants good for the people. And this is uh, likewise an application of the narration of Anas radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi that not one of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself he loves for himself so this is a high status uh, this is a high status <laughs> after this he mentioned la yablugu al-abdu haqiqat al-imani hatta ya'udd al-bala'a ni'matan wa raha'a he said, a person, a man or a slave, he will not reach the, the reality of sincere faith, of iman, until he considers a calamity a blessing, and until he considers uh, ease and prosperity a trial and calamity, a trial and calamity. And he mentioned, and uh, he will likewise not reach sincere faith, and the, 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 the true faith until he does not want to be praised for the worship of Allah. Until he does not desire any praise for, for, for the worship of Allah. And he doesn't have that in his heart. He doesn't have that in, in his heart. Until then, he will not reach the, the reality of sincere faith. Likewise, he says, Rahimahullah, حَرَامٌ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ أَنْ تُصِيبَ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ حَتَّى تَزْهَدُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَتَّى تَزْهَدُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا That it's uh, impermissible, haram, and it's not possible for your hearts to find the sweetness of faith until you have zuhud in this life until you have zuhud in this life we've seen what zuhud means before until you do not become preoccupied with this dunya with the affairs that will cause you to forget about Allah in the home of the hereafter until it cause you to forget about Allah in the home of the hereafter so a person in order to taste the sweetness of faith he has to he has to prefer Allah Azza wa Jal. He has to love Allah more than he loves himself and more than he loves all mankind. And likewise, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this manner, he will taste the sweetness of faith. So therefore, again, the one who reaches this level, he will not be preoccupied with the dunya until he neglects the rights of Allah. Rather, he will use the dunya entirely, all of it, for his goal. And that is to reach 
the pleasure, the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. After this, he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala, all of these are continuous narrations of al fudayl ibn Ayyal, rahimahullah. He says, إِذَا لَمْ تَقْدِرْ عَلَى قِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ وَصِيَامِ النَّهَارِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ مَحْرُومٌ كَبَّلَتْكَ خَفِيَّتُكَ He said, rahimahullah ta'ala, that if you are not able to stand in the night prayer, and if you're not able to fast in the daytime, meaning the non-obligatory prayer, of course, and the non-obligatory fasting, if you're not able to stand in the night prayer, and if you're not able to, to fast, the non-obligatory fast, then you should know that you have been prohibited. You should know that you have been prohibited and your sins have shackled you and enchained you. Your sins have shackled you and enchained you. خَطِيَّتُكَ And your sins, they have prohibited you and changed you from, from that. And this is a great statement. A person, he will examine himself and he will look into his affair. And in he, maybe he's, he has a desire to get up at nighttime, but he's not able to. Or maybe he even has lost the desire would he ever be allowed to get up at the night time. He should rectify this affair and look into himself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, Sharaf al-Mu'min. Sharaf al-Mu'min qiyamuhu min al-layl. Qiyamuhu min al-layl. That the nobility of a believer is that he stands in the night prayer. That he stands in the night prayer. The night prayer is no doubt. It's not obligatory, but it's a sign of sincere faith. And it's as the people of knowledge mentioned, in da'bu as-sarihin. It's the manner it's the manner and the methodology of the pious and the righteous. Either they will stand in the night prayer before they go to bed, or they will stand in the night prayer and he, after they sleep and, and before the rising of the Fajr. But in any case, it's very important to be accustomed and to strive to perform the night prayer, the witty prayer. If one, he thinks that he can uh, wake up before Fajr, then he will sleep first, and this is best and for him. And if he is afraid that he will not wake up, and he, because of how tired he may be and the likes like this, or whatever the case may be, he will pray before he goes to sleep. And this is best for him. And this has been narrated from Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that the Prophet asked him, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when do you pray the with your prayer? He said, before I go to sleep. He said, Bil hazmi akhadta. He said, with, certain, with, with certainty and determination, you have, you have taken hold. And he meaning that he, 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 he has taken this manner in the best way. And then he asked Umar radiallahu anhu, when do you pray the witr prayer? He said, I sleep first, and then I wake up before Fajr. And he said, bi fi'li fa'alta. He said, with uh, the action that I do, you have done. Yani, akhatta bil quwa. In one narration, you have taken with strength. Yani, but in any case, yani, whichever one is easier for a believer to continue upon, this is the best for him. This is the best for him. The night prayer. If a person he can't stand in the night prayer, for that is studying us, look into his soul and take himself to account. It is, it is only the sins that have prohibited him. It is only the sins that have prohibited him. That have prohibited him. Likewise, yani the, 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 the fasting in the daytime. The fasting in the daytime. A person he could look at all the affairs. And all, all of the actions of goodness. Because the scholars, they say, al hasanatu tajur uqtaha. A good deed, it pulls uh, along with it another good deed. Yani, it opens the doorway for goodness. The one who does good, sincerity for the sake of Allah, it opens up the doorway for goodness. Even to the extent that this is the sign, the people of knowledge that mention, those who make hajj, that the hajj is mabrur. That his situation is better when he comes back. If he was upon khayr, whenever he went to hajj, and he came back upon more khayr, and, and, and in a better situation, it's a sign that his hajj was good. Or if he was upon evil, and when he went to hajj, and he came back, and his situation was better, then it's a sign that it was accepted. Either he went from foul to good, or from good to better. This is a sign that the hajj was accepted. And likewise, Ramadan, and the case is like this. So a believer, if he has good with him, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who is sincere, Allah ash-shakur, yashkuru amalahu salih. Allah Azza wa Jal, He will show thanks for him and He will open up the goodness for him and He will make a way for him to draw near to him. He will make a way for the slave to draw near to him. But as for the sayyah and the bad deed, it's the same case in the same way. A sayyah to tajuru uqtaha. Tajuru uqtaha. A bad deed, it brings along another bad deed and it, open, it opens up the, 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 the gateway for more bad deeds. And a person who looks one time, he falls in. A person who touches or he speaks one time, if he's not careful, he will fall in to a hole of sin and to a, a, a pit of disobedience. But a believer, he should never despair because if he is sincere and he repents to Allah, that is from the best of all good deeds. If he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his tawheed and he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his authority and his command and that Allah azza wa jal, he is the Rabb, Rabb al-Alameen, he has commandments and he has set limits and he remembers his own soul and that he is weak and he has transgressed the rights and the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he repents. 
and he repents. And this is from the best of all deeds, opening up the gateway of goodness for him now. So a believer, he will live like this, and he, in this manner, examining his soul and repenting to Allah Azza wa Jal, and taking himself into account and making al istighfar yani in the daytime and the nighttime, in the daytime, and in in the nighttime, in the nighttime. Also, he mentions here, uh, rahimahullah, that Fudayl he saw wa ra'a qawman min ashab al-hadith yamrahuna wa yadhakun fanadahum mahlan ya warathat al-anbiya mahlan thalathan innakum a'imatun yuktada bikum He mentioned and he giving advice to his students and to the people of knowledge uh, that he saw some people from the students of hadith from, from the students of hadith any those who were known to be students of knowledge and he seen them joking and laughing any out loud out loud in, in public in this manner and he said to them, slow down, take it easy, O oh, inheritors of the prophets. Take it down, t t slow down, take it easy, O oh, inheritors of the prophets. And he said it three times. And he said it three times, Verity, you are imams that people are following. And he'd be careful. I like this. It's been narrated from Ibn Mubarak, Rahimahullah, that he said that we used to laugh, or, or maybe it was uh, Ad Ozai. One of them they mentioned that we used to laugh and joke with, with the people until they started following us and we, and we, and we became uh, leaders in our communities and then we stopped smiling and laughing. And we stopped smiling and laughing. And he, so the, the issue here is it's allowed to smile and joke. But uh, a student, he would do that. A person of knowledge, he would do that with nobility. And he would do that with moderation. And this was the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would not laugh. Uh, with a loud voice, whether he would smile and you would see happiness and cheerfulness in his face. And sometimes he would laugh and joke with his companions, but he would say that which is true. And he would never lie. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was not something that he had done all the time. And he, so this is any advice any for the students that they have to realize that there are individuals who look up to them and that they are qudwa. And the one who has sought knowledge and came back home, uh, he has a great position and responsibility on him that he will be a role model in that. He can either be a role model, Qudwa uh, al-Hasana, or be a Qudwa al And a believer, likewise, not only the students of knowledge, but likewise, a mother and father in their home, their Qudwa for their child. So let them realize that, and know that, and uh, give them their right of cultivating them in the best way. And that requires to have the best manners, and uh, to be upon a good path, and to have knowledge. To have knowledge of the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be a good role model. To be a good role model. Some of the children, may Allah rectify the affairs of the Muslims, they're misguided in these days. And many times if we, would have, we would not have to look any further than the parents. We would not have to look any further than the parents. Because they're the ones who had led them to their desires and to the misunderstandings. And the life like this because of ignorance of the deen of Allah. And ignorance of the tawheed of Allah. And ignorance of the greatness of Allah. And ignorance of the promise and the threat of Allah. And ignorance of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And showing concern for this life until they have turned away from the affairs of the deen. And then they are complaining about the children and their lives like this. And he, so and he, uh, learning and he, one's self is very important. Rectification, it begins and he, with one's own soul. With one's own soul. After this, he mentioned, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, again, clarifying the dangers uh, of uh, the issues of knowledge, if it's not carried properly. He, he says, Rahimahullah, that, يُغْفَرُ لِلْجَاهِرِ سَبْعُونَ ذَنْبًا مَا لَا يُغْفَرُ لِلْعَالِمِ ذَنْبٌ وَاحِدٌ He said that an ignorant person, a person of ignorance who did not know, he will be pardoned or forgiven for 70 sins that a person of knowledge, he will not be forgiven for one of them. He will not be forgiven for one of them. And he liked this to people of not as they mentioned, in kunta la tadri, fatilka musiba. Fatilka musiba tun wa in kunta tadri, fal musiba tu alvamu. That if you did not know, and that this is impermissible or an obligation and the likes like this, the fact that a person is ignorant of his religion, if he did not know, fatilka musiba. In kunta la tadri, fatilka musiba. But if you know, if you know, then the musiba is even greater. The musiba is even greater. He knows it's haram, he knows it's not permissible. He knows it's an obligation. He knows the sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knows uh, that Allah can see him and hear him. He knows the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And then he turned away from that without showing care or concern for the, the sacred rights of Allah. Then this one, the, the calamity is even greater. The calamity uh, is even greater. The knowledge, it has to be, it has to be applied and it has to be put in, uh, into application. After this, uh, it's been narrated 
يعني ذا الفضيل أخذ بيد السفيان بن عيينة في هذا الوادي فقلت إن كنت تظن أنه بقي على وجه الأرض شر مني ومنك فبئس ما تظن It's mentioned that Fudayl, he took the hand of Sufyan ibn Uyayna. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he died in the year 198 from the greatest of the narrators of hadith, from the greatest of the, the narrators of hadith and the carriers of the sunnah. They're walking through a valley. For that he took his hand and he said to them, if you think that there remains on the, on the face of this earth somebody who was more evil than me and you, then how evil what you have thought. Then how evil what you have thought. And he meaning that uh, a person he should never be amazed with his own self. And these are from the imams of the sunnah. They're from the carriers of the sunnah. They're from the righteous and the most pious. But if a person, he looks at his own righteousness, that would destroy him. That would tear him down. That would destroy him in his deeds. And in the ujub, that he will be amazed with his own self. So this is what he's telling him. And if, that, if you, in the cases, if a believer, he, se he sees himself that he has good from righteousness and piety, this should not cause him to look into himself and to think that he's better than others. But rather, it should cause him to be humble and to thank Allah Azza wa Jal and to know that it's the favor from Allah. If he truly had tawheed, he would know that all of the actions and nothing happens in this life except with the permission of Allah. So it is Allah who guided him and allowed him to submit. It is from the command of Allah and the decree of Allah and the lordship of Allah Azza wa that he allowed him to submit to him and to pray to him and to bow before him and to prostrate before him and to give charity and to stand in this prayer and that prayer. This is a favor from Allah. So if a believer he's seen the good, this would only increase him in humbleness and humility before Allah. And likewise, he would taste the sweetness of that and he'll be afraid to leave it and afraid to lose it and afraid that it'll be stripped from him. So therefore, he'll be humble before Allah and he'll be humble before the slaves of Allah. And if he sees that he has good, he knows it's from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a beautiful yani, uh, understanding. It's a beautiful understanding. But at the same time, yani, they are from the best of the people. They are from, from the best of the people. Yani, because of their creed and because of their action and their deed. After this, he mentioned uh, a dhahabi and he to clarify that a person, he shouldn't be misunderstood. And Allah knows best. And this is the order that he mentioned it. Yani, that, yani, they don't think that they're better than others, meaning that they're humble. And that they know that the favor is from Allah. But one shouldn't think that, uh, for example, an innovator or a disbeliever or a Christian in a life like this is better than them. Or that they believe that. Or that they believe that. La, this means that they're humble and they're submissive. And they know that the blessing is from Allah and not from their own, their own souls. Indicating this, Dhahabi, he mentioned that Fudair, he says, Man ahabba sahiba bid'ah, ahbat Allahu amala, wa akhraja nur al-Islami min qalbihi, la yaratafi'u li sahibi bid'atin ila Allahi amal. Uh, he said that, Rahimahullah, that whoever loves and has any love for a person of innovation, then Allah, he will invalidate his deeds. Then Allah will invalidate his deeds. And whoever, uh, whoever has love for the people of innovation, then Allah will invalidate his deeds. And he will strip the, the light of iman and sincere faith from his heart. From his heart. Yani, this is because innovation, it, it destroys al Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came with a deen. He came with a deen and a way of life and a sunnah, legal ways and laws that are revelation revealed. It's revelation from him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for somebody to come and to replace that with what they think is good or what they found in their community or in their culture and their lives like this. In reality, they're doing away with the sunnah. Every time somebody introduces a newly invented matter into their religion, then in the same case, they are uh, doing away with the sunnah. They have done away with the sunnah. From the examples uh, of that, we find that, that in some cultures, right after the prayer, the first thing to do is to reach over and shake somebody's hand. We find that right after the, the obligatory prayer, the first thing that people do, they, they, they'll, they'll reach over and shake hands. Some of them, will, they'll, they'll stretch out and stretch out and stretch out. And, uh, and uh, shaking hands is good, but that's not the place for it. And the sunnah here is that a person, he'll be busy with his own hand, remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla and making adhkar. And making adhkar, not busying, the, the, not busying others with his hand. Rather to make adhkar with his hand and to remember Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the sunnah here. But as for those people who have been busy shaking each other's hand left and right, left and right, then they have left off the sunnah. And they're not making the adhkar. And they're not using the hands in the manner that is legislated. So this is an indication in, in, in the, the, the dangers of, uh, of innovation. That every time an innovation is introduced, in return, they're wiping out and doing away with one of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The innovators, they're the true enemies of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned uh, in more than one narration in different wordings that Adalu al khayri kafa'ilihi Adalu al khayri kafa'ilihi The one who leads somebody to some good, then he's like the one who has done it. وَمَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنًا كَانَ اللَّهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا مَنْ بَعْدِهِ مَنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَنْقُسَ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْئًا That whoever does a good deed and calls people to a good deed in Islam, then he will have the reward, or the reward of that and the reward of those who work by way of that and, and, and uh, it will not decrease his rewards whatsoever. So the people... Uh, who, or the one who has the most right to this is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every good deed that is done legislatively and proper, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he shares a reward in that because he is the one who has legislated that by the permission of Allah. So everyone who performs a prayer or an act of worship that is proper and correct for the sake of Allah and according to the legislation, then uh, the one who taught him that, he shares in the reward all the way back to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the one who commits an action of innovation and he starts to worship Allah upon innovation, Allah, he does not accept that action. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, Man amila amala laysa alayhi amru nafahu rad. That whoever does a deed that's not in accordance to our affairs, then it's rejected. It's rejected. So the one who worships Allah upon innovation, it's rejected. And so therefore he's cutting off the reward that goes back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's cutting off the reward. Those who worship Allah properly upon the sunnah, the reward is going to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has a share in that. Without decreasing the reward, the reward of those who do that whatsoever. As for those who introduce innovations, then that reward, and, and stopping the people from the sunnah, and blocking for the people from the sunnah, and calling them away from the sunnah, in reality, he is cutting off that chain of reward for that person himself and all the way back to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for this reason Ibn Qayyim he mentioned that they're the enemies of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so a person he should not be deceived innovation even if it sounds good or even if in their community or in their culture this is how they do it and the life's like this if it's not according to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's rejected and it's a foul way it's rejected and it's a foul way a believer has to cultivate himself upon this understanding he has to cultivate himself upon this uh, understanding. After this, he says, Rahimahullah, Nadar al Mu'mini, Ila al Mu'mini, Yajlu al Qalb. Look, a believer looking to another believer, it would, it would cleanse and purify his heart. And he will look into his brother and he will be happy to see him. And the likes like this, when Nadar al Rajul Ila Sahibi Bid'a, Yurithu al Ama. And a man looking at the people of innovation that will bring about for him blindness. Any blindness in his heart, would he ever be Allah? Man Jalasa ma Sahibi Bid'a, Lam yu'ata al hikmah. And whoever sits along with the people of innovation, he has not been given wisdom. He has not been given wisdom. Sitting with the people of innovation, this is not allowed, and this is impermissible, and this is not from wisdom. It's not, it's not from wisdom to sit with the people of innovation, those that have gatherings of knowledge and they, they remember Allah in an innovative way, or they have parties and they are celebrating celebrations that are innovative, and there's no legislation for that, there's no sunnah for that, or they're doing actions of worship and that's not in accordance with the sunnah, and they gather for that. A person, he will not sit with them and participate with them, and he will never support them. Not financially and not physically by making their numbers great by joining them in, 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 in their congregations. By joining them in their congregations. Yani, so this is uh, uh, a clear evidence yani, and refutation of some of the Sufiya who claim to have an allegiance or they love al fudayr ibn Iyadh. And because of his zuhd and his wara and his piety, some of them have claimed that he is from the Sufiya and the likes like this. But clearly he's refuting anybody who is contrary to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the worst of the, those misguided sects today, those who claim those turuq and those ways ascribing them to men that have come generations and generations and uh, have uh, ascribed that actions of worship to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal that have no authority and have no proof and no evidence. So uh, a believer, he suffice himself with the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, whenever for that he got sick, it's mentioned here that uh, he said uh, whenever he was sick, irhamni bihubbi iyaka faraysa shay'un ahabu ilayya minka. And he, he would try to draw near to Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, oh Allah, Oh, 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 oh Allah, show me mercy because I love you and there's nothing more beloved to me than you. And he so show me mercy. And he used to say whenever he was sick, Masani al-Dur wa anta arham al Oh Allah, verily I have been harmed with difficulty and you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. And he putting his trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this has preceded any that uh, he mentioned about this affair that one he will uh, fear Allah 
and have hope in the mercy of Allah. And particularly whenever death comes or sickness and ailment comes, he will increase his hope and reliance and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned, Rahimahullah wa ta'ala, man istawhasha min al-wahda wa sta'nasa bin nas lam yasla min al-riya. La hajja wa la jihada ashadu min habs al-lisan wa laysa ahadun ashad ghamman min man sajana lisanahu. Min man sajana lisanahu. He mentioned, Rahimahullah wa ta'ala, that whoever finds, becomes lonely, whoever becomes lonely and, uh, yani, he finds that uh, he's lonely and, uh, sad and the likes like this whenever he's by himself and then he likes to and he finds great comfort in, in being in the company of others then he's not safe from showing off Then he's not safe from from showing off many uh, of the salaf they used to mention that uh, whenever they are with the people this is whenever they're lonely and whenever they're alone this is whenever they find comfort because they would spend their days with, uh, with the remembrance of Allah and their nights likewise and uh, in seeking knowledge and in learning and the recitation of the Quran and pondering. So therefore, whenever they're with the people, this is whenever they're lonesome and this is whenever they're uh, bothered and this is whenever they are uh, yani not feeling comfortable. And whenever they're alone with Allah Azza wa Jal or with the books of the Salaf, this is whenever they're pleased and this is whenever they're happy and this is whenever they find, they find content and whenever they find the yani, comfort and, and companionship. Like this has been narrated likewise from uh, uh, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala. They said to him, and he, some of his companions, إِذَا أَنْتَ الصَّلَيْتَ لِمَا لَمْ تَجْلِسْ مَعَنَا He said, whenever you pray, and he, well, after you finish the prayer, how come you don't sit down with us? How come you don't sit down and, and hang out with us? قَالَ أَجْلِسُ مَعَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِئِينَ Ibn Mubarak, he died in 181, and he's from the Atba'a Tabi'in. He said, uh, he said, because I don't sit with you, because I go and I sit with the companions and with the tabi'een. أَنْظُرُ فِي كُتُبِهِمْ وَآثَارِهِمْ He said, I go, to, I go sit with the companions and the tabi'een. I, I, I look into their books and into their narrations. And he doesn't want to be with the people. Rather, he wants to be with a salaf al-sari. He wants to be with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Remember uh, the, the, the hereafter and learning and the likes like this. He said, فَمَا أَسْنَعُ مَعَكُمْ أَنْتُمْ تَكْتَابُونَ النَّاسِ He said, what I'm going to do with you guys anyways, you sit around and backbite the people. You sit around and backbite any of the people. So uh, a believer, again, yani, what he's referring to here is this issue here. Yani, that uh, he finds uh, happiness whenever he's alone thinking about the hereafter and pondering over this life. And the one who has to have companionship and be around the people, he says here, he's not safe from, from showing off. He's not safe from, from showing off. He said there's no hajj, and there's no jihad that is more severe than refining one's tongue. There's no hajj or no jihad more severe than refraining one's own tongue. And there is, and the one who refrains uh, and there's no one who has more grief than the one who is refraining his tongue. And the one who is refraining his tongue. And he has things he wants to say, but he refrained them out of fear uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this, likewise, he said, Rahimahullah, Ihfad lisanaka, waqbil ala sha'nika, wa'rif zamanaka, wa'akhfi makanaka. He mentioned, Rahimahullah, that you have to protect your tongue. And you protect your tongue from actions of disobedience. And uh, that you should be devoted to your own affair. And devote yourself to your own affair, to, to rectifying your own soul and that which is concerning you and not others. And he said, know the, your time. Wa'rif zamanaka. This is very important advice likewise, to have knowledge of the time that you live in and the fitin and the trials and the corruption that the people are involved in, in one's particular time and era and in one's particular environment, to have uh, knowledge and awareness yeah, and especially for those who are raising children, to know that uh, there, are, there are trials around us, and that there are fitin around us, and there are evils around us. And if a person is heedless about that, he can bring it upon himself and bring it upon his family while he did not even perceive. While he did not even perceive. So to be aware of one's time and uh, the corruption uh, and the facade in one's environment and area specifically, this is very important. This is very important. He said, well, mechanic, and also hide, and he hide your place, and even where you are. Uh, and where you are. He mentioned, Rahimahullah ta'ala, min akhlaqi, min akhlaqi al-anbiya, al-hilmu wa anatu wa qiyamu layl Al-hilmu wa anatu wa qiyamu layl From the manners of the prophets is that one he will be forbearing and he will not be hasty. 
he'll be forbearing and he'll not be hasty. And he will, he, will be, he will be gentle in his affairs and not be hasty. He'll be forbearing and likewise standing in the night prayer. Standing in the night prayer. This is from the manners uh, and the etiquettes of, of the NBA. He mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, to, he, he said, إِذَا fudail, جَدَّدَ لِي الْحُزْنِ وَمَقَدْتُ نَفْسِي ثُمَّ بَكَى Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, whenever I would look and see Fudayl, any situation that he was in, then uh, the, the Huzn would come to me. Al Huzn, yani al Khushu'. Al Huzn, it means grief. But what they refer to here, it means Khushu'. And then he, the humbleness would come into his heart. And uh, he would uh, detest his own soul. And then he would cry. And he meaning that Al Fudayl, he was somebody who reminded him of Allah. Whenever he seen him, he would remember Allah Azza wa Jalla and his own deficiencies. And he would see Fudayl in a situation and his high status and rank and worship and piety and fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla until he would detest his own soul and it would bring humbleness to him. And he's such a good companion, the, the one who reminds you of Allah and the one who reminds you of your obligations and duties to Allah. This is from the best, from the best of the people. From the best of the people. It's been mentioned here, نَذَرَ الْفُضَيْلِ إِلَى رَجُلٍ يَشْكُوا إِلَى رَجُلٍ فَقَالَ يَا هَذَا تَشْكُو مَنْ تَشْكُو مَنْ يَرْحَمُكَ إِلَى مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُكَ إِلَى مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُكَ He said uh, that Fulayr, he looked at a man who was complaining to another man. And then he said to him, what's, he, said, he said, what's wrong with you? You're complaining, to, you're complaining about the one who shows you mercy to the one who does not show you mercy. You're complaining about the one who shows you mercy to the one who does not show you mercy. And he's complaining about his situation to somebody and saying, and he's he talking about his bad situation and this and this and this and this. And this is the understanding of Fudayl. At Tawheed, the affair is, is Allah, the command is in the hands of Allah. He said, well, Yeah, Hada, what's wrong with you? You're complaining about the one who shows you mercy to the one who doesn't show you mercy. To the one who doesn't show you mercy. And this is, the, this is the case here. That a believer, he will complain to Allah. He will not complain to the people. That they will complain to Allah, not to the people. Not, not, not to, to the people. They said, uh, he said, Rahimahullah, كَانُوا إِذَا تَعَلَّمُوا عَمِلُوا وَإِذَا عَمِلُوا شُغِلُوا وَإِذَا شُغِلُوا فُقِدُوا وَإِذَا فُقِدُوا تُرِبُوا وَإِذَا تُرِبُوا حَرَبُوا Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, he says that the, the people before, and he, from those who he learned from, that if they, if they learned, whenever they learn, they would apply it. Whenever they learned, they would apply the knowledge that they learned. And if they applied the knowledge that they learned, they became preoccupied. Any with their own self. They became preoccupied. Any with the, the good that they're upon. And if they became preoccupied, then they would not be seen. Any to the people, they would not be seen. And if they were not be seen, then they would be sought. And whenever they were sought, they would flee and they would run. They would flee and they would, and they would run. And he, again, he would be somebody who would busy himself with himself. And he would be preoccupied with his own worship and his own deen and his own soul and the rectification of the self and his family. And he, this does not mean a person, he will not help others or, or benefit others, but he would not spend his life with the people. He would not spend his life with the people. He would spend his life and he, with himself and taking care of himself and his, and his family. It's mentioned here that he said, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ مُحِبًّا بِالْقُرْآنِ مُؤْنِسًا وَبِالْمَوْتِ وَعِضًا وَبِخَشِتِ اللَّهِ عِلْمًا وَبِالْإِغْتِرَارِ جَهْلًا That is sufficient to have knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, or to have love for Allah Azza wa Jal, that the Qur'an will be a means of comfort, that he will find comfort and companionship with the Qur'an, and that death would suffice him as an, an admonition, and that fearing Allah would be uh, sufficient for him in knowledge, and uh, that considered, uh, he would consider ignorance, yani the fact that one will be deceived by his own actions, that one will be deceived by his own actions. He mentioned khaslatani, Tuqassiyani al-qalb. There are two, there are two attributes or characteristics that harden the heart. Kathro to kalam wa kathro to akli. And he eating too much, and he in excess, and likewise speaking too much, and in excess about the worldly affairs. He mentioned uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, he says, كيف ترى حال من كثرت ذنوبه وضعف علمه وثاني عمره ولم يتزول معاده He said, what do you think about somebody who you look at him and his sins have become many and his knowledge is very weak and his life is going away and he has not even prepared for the meeting of his Lord, for the meeting of his Lord. Yani an indication that a believer, he has to take this life seriously. 
and he will not suffice with ignorance for himself. The, from the greatest of the calamities that have befallen the Ummah is the people have been, been preoccupied with this life and they have, learned, they have left off learning the obligations. They have left off learning the obligations until one of the Muslims will pray and he does not even know how to pray as the Prophet Sallallahu prayed. He'll pray five times a day in a manner that is uh, contrary to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you ask him how the Prophet prayed, he will not be able to answer. He will not be able to answer. And this is a calamity. It's an obligation to pray and to learn how to pray and to pray for the sake of Allah and to pray according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So that which is obligatory upon a person in one day and one night, he will show concern for that because he has a Lord that he's going to meet. He has a Lord that he's going to meet. And this is from the, the reminders uh, of uh, Al-Fudayl Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. It's mentioned uh, that uh, he says the Afatul Qurra al Ujub. The calamity of the students of knowledge is amazement. Is uh, is amazement. And he mentioned here, and he closing his biography, he says, That uh, Al Fudayl, yani he used to live his, his livelihood and his provision, it used to come from Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Abdullah al Mubarak, he used to be a great scholar of hadith and from the most, uh, the, the best of, of the salaf and the cares of hadith, but he was also a businessman. And he used to make lots of money and he used to send it to the people of knowledge and he used to provide for them. And he used to send for them specifically yani, uh, 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 money yani, uh, that, that would suffice him yani, so that he could continue doing what he's doing from seeking knowledge and calling the people. I and mean, this is from the, the beautiful way. After this, uh, he mentioned he died in 187. He died in the year 187, ta'ala, and then he mentioned uh, the biography of his son, Ali, and that he was from the most righteous and the pious. And we continue reading that which he mentioned about Ali uh, in the class and the tomorrow, inshallah. And after Maghrib, hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.